So now we'll look at partial fractions where the denominator can get a little bit more um, tricky, um, adding a further step of complication to deal with. Something like this. So this is called a repeated factor. So we have that x minus 2 bracket that's squared. Um, so if you're thinking about what could go into that denominator for the fractions that we would separate it out into, we'll of course get the x minus 1 and the x minus 2 squared, but there's also a third one to consider. We could also have a fraction with x minus 2. That would also count as a factor in x minus 1 and x minus 2 squared. We could have a fraction there, something over x minus 2, that would still go into that denominator. So we'd have our a, b and c on the top. And if you express that over a common denominator, it would look like this. So we have our top lines that are equal to each other, and we're going to do a bit of substitution. So I'm choosing x equals 2 so that we can um, zero out some of those brackets. Anywhere that there's an x minus 2 will become a zero. So we get on the left-hand side 3 and on the right-hand side c. And then if we do a similar thing with x equals 1, we get the value of a to be 2. And then we're going to look at the coefficients of x squared. So on the left-hand side, we've got none. And on the right-hand side, we've got a and b. And since we already know a, we can work out b. And then, of course, we need to rewrite it in the form that we were asked to. So it looks like this. Okay, next example is of a quadratic factor. So something like this, where we have our fraction at the bottom um, is actually a quadratic. So this can be separated out into the two fractions with the um, two parts of the denominator. Now the top of the first one is just a as usual, but the top of the quadratic, uh, the, the fraction that has the quadratic on the bottom, could actually have a linear term on the top, so it could be bx plus c. Um, you can kind of think about this as, as keeping it as a proper fraction so that it doesn't become top-heavy. Whatever the order of the bottom is, the top could be anything up to one less than that order. So a quadratic is of order 2 because 2 is the highest power of x. So the top could be of order 1. So our highest power of x, x could be 1. So we could actually have bx plus c on the top there. So if we were then to um, follow our process, we've got our numerator looking... Um, like this, and then we'll do some substitution, and we'll equate the coefficients of x squared, and then the constant terms, and then we've been able to work out all of the values that we need to finish that off. Now we've um, placed in there that b is minus 1 and c is 1, but we would usually tidy that up a little bit at the end. Instead of writing minus x plus 1, we'll just rewrite that as 1 minus x, just looks a little bit neater.